Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's third video. We're going to have a look at whether the next 10 to 14 days, but today's third video day 10, will take us to the 11th of July. And we're going to check out beyond that with the SOGFS and ECM Ensemble, the Bayron Surround, a couple of weeks, we'll have a look at the CFS V2 for August. So in Salvo from the CFS for August at the end of the video, and I shall get on that for you in a moment. Just save up the first video season, our 6 p.m. upload. We've also released Jeremy Friday. And at uh, 7 p.m., we've got Terry Scully, July forecast to come. So that'll be an interesting while you'll see what Terry is forecasting for July. Uh, that will be coming up at 7 p.m. this evening. Please like, share, subscribe on the video. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Right, we're going to start off then with the current scenario in the tropical Atlantic. We've got two disturbance areas. We've got a yellow X just here. Uh, that is disturbance one. It's only got a 10% chance to cycle information in the next 10 and uh, in the next two and uh, five days. So I don't think you have to worry too much about that. And then just here we have got this red X, which is potential tropical site site potential tropical cyclone two, giving maximum sustained winds of 40 miles per hour with a minimum central pressure. Of 1,005 millibars. It's got a 90% chance of cycling motion in the next two days. This is almost certainly going to be the next tropical storm. So, composition of two uh, is just here imminently. Looks like it's imminent. This will become a tropical storm. It will push through uh, Puerto Rico by the look of it. Somewhere between Nicaragua and Puerto Rico, and then out in as a tropical storm, and then out into the Pacific Ocean, still as a tropical storm, and then somewhere off the coast of Mexico, early to middle of next week, it looks like it's going to become a hurricane in the uh, Pacific Ocean. So uh, we'll be keeping a close eye on that. I would have thought over the uh, next uh, few days and uh, and whatnot, see what's going to happen with a potential cyclone two. I don't know. Right, let's have a look at the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles next coming on at London today. So red line is the first year upper air temperature average for London. We're starting off a little bit below average with the upper air temperatures at the moment. They're going to say generally on the cool side over the next uh, over the next five to seven days, uh, a little bit below average. But later next week, you will find the upper air temperature beginning to uh, lift up. As we go through the second week of July into the middle of the month, there is a warming trend that is in evidence. And we have got a few uh, hot outlier heat spike ensemble members appearing. We've got the green line here again, which is the GFS operational run. That becomes very, very hot around the 15th of July. We've got a few others as well. We've got the control run, which does it a little bit later on, but also gets very close to 20 degrees at 850 HPA. And uh, and a few others are included in there as well, in time from around the 11th, 12th of uh, July onwards, it looks like, you know, uh, we have got a chance of, of, of a heat spike uh, lasting uh, a day or two, perhaps. We can't just have these cool... Uh, these cool on some of them are down here, though, of course. So, um, no, just gonna wait and see where this is going. But there is a possibility here, I think, that we might so probably be temp temporary, you know, temporarily turn it quite hot briefly sometime in the second week of July. Um, probably most likely around the middle of the month, 14th, 15th of July, something like that. So, taste wise, look pretty dry as well now for London. Not much in way of precipitation until later on, perhaps, when, um, Maybe with that, with that heat, if it does come up, there will be an increasing risk of thunderstorms. Have to see about that, of course. Temperature anomalies from the 30th of June to the uh, 8th of July coming out a little bit below average. This hasn't updated since yesterday's 12 set uh, runs, by the way. And uh, precipitation anomalies from the 30th of June to the 8th of July coming out drier than average. So a little bit on the cool side. But largely dry. The latest wind from that from EarthNoldSchool.net shows that bringing wind from off the Atlantic Ocean uh, today, and uh, there will be further showers in places as well. Okay, let's start going through, through some chart data then. Miss Abelace UK Met Euro Run is looking for midnight on Monday when we begin to build in a little bit of a ridge into south. Could be main dry there. Uh, further north, also still showering with winds in from west northwest. Trend through next week is to build high pressure in. From the Azores, nice rich building in 
from the Azores high through the course of the week. And eventually we'll lose that cool northwesterly and back the wind into our west southwesterly. That'll be a warmer wind direct. So the trend through next week should see temperature beginning to lift up and get warm. So by the end of next week, I would imagine temperatures could, it could easily be into the uh, mid 20s Celsius, especially so more southern and southwestern areas. I can't. Right, back again, Robert Shari in the north on Monday, and then through the week, in comes that ridge from the Azores High building in the southwest. So by the time you have to the middle, uh, uh, by the time you get to the midday on, on the 8th of uh, July next Friday, um, we're under the influence of that big area of high pressure. And should again mo be mostly dry and, uh, and potentially really quite warm. GFS midnight run, which you know is going to get hot again later on. Uh, we'll see how that happens in a moment. But starting off with GFS midnight run on Monday in that northwestern wind and showers in the north, mainly dry uh, down in the south. Again, the trend with GFS through next week is to build in that uh, area of high pressure increasingly through the week, which is the potential lifting up as high pressure builds in and uh, turns us ever drier and warmer. That's day 10, excuse me, 11th of July, under a large area of high pressure then, looking mostly dry and potentially warm. Then the high pressure needs to drift eastwards, and this is what allows the hot air to start coming in from the south. As the high pressure drifts east, east that starts to pull the wind in from a southerly or southeast direction. Upper air temperatures are already warm around or just after day 10, but get hotter as we go beyond day 10 and we pull up this southerly to southeast wind. Up comes that hot air from uh, North Africa and Spain, surging northwards up the side of uh, Europe. Not lasting all that long, top low pressure then, moving in from off the Atlantic, probably bringing a fungi breakdown, but it is very hot by the 14th of July. have got across 20 cells ice firm just clipping in across the southeast of England. Again, that will get temperature into a mid-30 Celsius at least. Uh, but then we quick go, by 15th, quick go back into like a cooler, fresher push from off the Atlantic. So again, just another one of those brief heat spikes that we seem to get quite a lot of in, in, um, in, in summer since 2015. I've never talked about this uh, earlier on in June, um, since 2015, we we seen most summers to get at least one, two, uh, you know, very extreme heat spikes that last just a day or two, and then get swept away. Never truly entrenching and bedding in for for several days, um, but becoming really hot, you know, just for a day or two, and then swept away by uh, by the return of the westerlies. And it seems to be like a common occurrence that you get. Uh, pretty regularly now, uh, since uh, since the summer of 2015, I think was the first time uh, we had that. Anyway, uh, by the 17th of July, by the end of the GFS, midnight run into a cooler, fresher push of westerly winds and low pressure is in the Atlantic. Now, the GFS 6 there looks like that again, rather cooler and showery on uh, Monday for the north, turning dry and south. That high pressure uh, rich from the Azores taking over as we go through the week. We find that high pressure extending in from the Atlantic, sitting over the top of the country, bringing loads of dry, fine, and increasingly warm weather as we get to day 10, which is Monday, the 11th of July. We could be seeing uh, weather turning increasingly hot down in the south in particular. Now, unlike the midnight run, the six air actually pulls high pressure out to the west this time. So, to get the hot air in, of course, we need get the high pressure east of the uh, UK and then the wind around the high pressure is going in that direction, clockwise direction and so that allows the southerly to, to move in and pull the hot air up from uh, from Spain and Africa and whatnot. This GFS run though does the opposite, that actually shapes high pressure out to the west uh, and pulls in like a cooler northwesterly again. So no heat spike with the GFS uh, 6 there, operational run Actually, we're going to like a cooler north or northeasterly there. Probably rather showery in the east. And the upper air temperatures look a lot, lot cooler compared to the midnight uh, GFS run on the 14th of July. Let's go back. Those upper air temperatures on the 14th of July. There they are. Look how hot they are on the GFS midnight run. Those upper air temperatures. Look how cool they are, though, on the 6th there. So uh, this is a very, very uncertain scenario. Of course, it's uh, like a couple of weeks away. So you expect uncertainty. And that is very much what we are seeing there. By turning everything to the end of the GFS 6F, we've got high pressure just out to our west-northwest. We're pulling in the wind 
from more of a north or northeast direction. That brings showers into east area, but the west should be mostly dry and quite warm under that area of high pressure. If you enjoyed the video, please you like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. We're grinding to 14,000 subscribers. So thank you so much, everybody, for, for all of the recent subs. And uh, don't forget to tell your friends and family to subscribe and help us to 14K. Thank you so much. Right, GM. Again, looking rather showery, and for the north anyway, quite cool uh, as we go through into Monday. South should be drier and warmer. And then through next week, the trend with GM, as with all the other model output, is to build in the Azores high. Here it comes, making its move, building through the country to turn it's increasingly dry and warm. As we get to day 10, we're under a big area of high pressure there. And uh, we would expect lots of dry, potentially warm, or even very warm, weather with that temperatures at least into mid if not the upper 20 celsius and then finally the ecmwf again looking rather showery and a little bit on the cool side uh through the early part of next week but the trend through next week as with all of the other model output is to build in that area of high pressure from the azores so by the time you get through day 10 then for july we're under a large area of high pressure bringing lots of dry warm sunny weather and temperatures could potentially be getting very warm down in the south in particular next week looks like it's going to be a really nice week i have to say if you like that sort of thing because some people like rain and whatnot in the summer you pay your money you take your choice right so uh this is how the uh the uh, precipitation forecast is looking based on that he said run from tomatoshow.com showing where particularly from northern western areas over the next day or two but as every week out into next week most of the rain Gets pushed to the north, the south turning mostly dry much of the time. Um, and the trend is increasingly to dry weather by day 10. Most of those are looking dry away from the far north and northwest of Scotland. This is the option on the table within the ECM ensemble today for day 10, which gets us to the 11th of July uh, from ECM uh, themselves today again. Uh, no update from the Icelandic Met Office with these uh, clusters uh, over the past few days. So 51 out of 51 members of the ECM ensemble showing high pressure dominating the weather across the rest of Europe um, on the 11th of July. So very strongly supporting uh, operational run today. Lots of dry and warm weather to come. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. And there's quite a lot of them. We'll get us to... The what day is that? I can't hardly make it out. So I think it's going to be about the 9th of July, uh, probably. No, it's uh, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's the 9th of July. Uh, okay, so 15 members of the ECM ensembles on Saturday, the 9th of July, showing high pressure slipping to the southwest with low pressure away to the northwest, bringing in the wind from more of a westerly type of direction. So uh, that's beginning to turn a bit more unsettled. And then just here, we have got 11 that have a mid-Atlantic ridge heading up towards Greenland with a trough of low pressure. Eastern winds are coming in from more of a northerly direction uh, with that. So that's uh, a lot cooler as it is unsettled too. However, we've got 10 just here that are looking hot with high pressure centred over and sort to the northern country, bring, wind, it bring the wind in from a hot east or southeasterly direction. Uh, we've got 8 down here that have high pressure again centred over the top of the country, mainly dry, very warm or hot. And then just here we have 7 that have low pressure over the country and they'd be pulling in the wind from like a north north direction they'd be unsettled and cool so a lot of options on the table there by the time we get uh through to uh two weeks out you know a lot of options to to be playing with and i still haven't got that date right have i so that's gonna be the 15th of july i think saturday the 15th is it let's go back i'm gonna go back and find out what day this is so what the hell is this uh right so it will be saturday the 16th of july there that's saturday the 16th of july so those are the options on the table for two weeks out which is saturday the 16th of july that is the option that was on the table for Monday the 11th of July. I wish the Icelandic Met Office would get their act together and bring these clusters back because doing it via the ECM actually is a lot more cumbersome. It doesn't 
uh, work as well. Anyway, we're sorted it all out. Right, finally, we're going to look at Service B2 for August. So, this is the opening salvo from the Service B2 for August. 700 millibar height normally looks unsettled. Look at that. Trouble of low pressure over and just the west of, uh, west of the country. It is a ridge around Spain, and there is hints of northern blocking here as well with high pressure within the northern latitudes. The temperature anomaly is actually looking quite warm for August, and the precipitation anomaly, well, with low pressure centres over and just the west of the country, looking a bit wetter than average, I have to say. So, a traditionally unsettled August there uh, is the opening salvo from uh, CFSB2. But remember, this is going to be updated daily between now and the last day of July, and it will change regularly as well as it does so. So let's wait and see. Right, we got the really end, didn't we? If you enjoyed the video, then please hit the smash the like button. And make sure you subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to share your friends and family to subscribe as well. And drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that for Gareth's World well, It's amazing. It's incredible. Thank you so much. Right, Tony Scully uh, will be uh, here later on, or I'll be here presenting Tony Scully's forecast later on at 7pm. Uh, so Tony's July forecast coming up for you um, at 7. Tomorrow we're going to start off with the 6am upload. We'll have the ECWF um, uh, six weeks look ahead uh, as well. I've got the weekend forecast, 10 to 14 days, all going to be revealed tomorrow. And then on Sunday, the Barnes... Uh, notice Sunday, uh, amongst other uploads, of course, we will be premiering the winter 2022-2023 NAO forecast. Um, so get your glad racks ready. I'll see you on the red carpet on Sunday at 8 for our premiere. But we've got plenty to come before then. Well, yeah, enjoy the rest of your Friday afternoon. I'll see you later on for Terry's uh, July forecast, maybe. But for this video, that's all for now. And thank you so much for watching.